my pleasure to present to you my uh, internship results with um, my supervisor, Professor Giuseppe Valenzi and Professor Pierre Duhamel, and also my request. Our work is about learning by slow slash partial compression. And um, our work also uh, submitted to the ICAS 2021 conference. And um, here is the outline of my presentation. We will first go for the introduction about the talk cloud, and we will have a um, I will then present my our solution in uh, compressed deport cloud, and um, next we have the performance evaluation, and we will conclude and so. Uh, so, uh, as you might know, the deport cloud is the data structure that are used in many three D applications such as VR, AR, or uh, autonomous vehicle and um, uh, we can park allow, allow us to uh, rotate or zoom in or zoom out to see uh, an object in different angle and each part in 3D space can be represented by geometry information. It is the X, Y, and Z and also the attribute. The attribute here can be the color RGB of each part and also the normal of that point. Another characteristic of port cloud is is very spare. Uh, only the point in the surface of the object is its and um, all all the three D volume is almost empty. Uh, we estimate if the serpent have around eight thousand eight hundred thousand point, uh, the uncompressed data would would take around one thousand megabit per second. And in this work, we focus on the geometric coding. That means we only focus on encoding the uh, geometry, geometry coordinate in YZ and uh, uh, not uh, include the um, color attribute of the uh, uh, port cloud. So, um, so I'm gonna take a pointer here. So um, instead of uh, XYZ coordinate, we can represent the port cloud into uh, another domain. We could have the voxel domain where or the octree domain. In the voxel domain, we from the original port cloud, we uh, quantize it into a um, Q of side D here. And we have D power three voxel within that Q. And in every Q, if uh, there is at least one point, inside the cube, that cube is called Occupy. And uh, normally less than 2% of the voxel are occupied. And we can also have another representation of the uh, geometry called Octree representation. When we uh, uh, recursively divide the uh, port cloud, the voxelized port cloud into uh, its sub chart block here, as you can see, and we have uh, three Occupy block and five empty block, and we use bit one to occupy block and use bit zero to indicate an uh, empty block. And in each occupy block, we can further partition into a smaller block, like uh, the uh, smaller block here and here and here. And we do the same scheme to uh, indicate the occupancy of each block and we stop the partitioning until the um, block size is equal to one and we can obtain a sequence of octree where in each level we had eight bits to represent the occupancy of each block. So as you can see in each domain of representation, for example, like in the voxel, we can have the uh, geometry information and it can be processed by neural network where we still have the uh, curve or the line from the uh, scenes. And in the octree, we do not have the uh, 3D information, but uh, in this representation, we can eliminate as much as um, uh, specificity in the popular where if the block is empty, we stop partition into lower level and this can can uh, would be can be a good representation for the spare 
data live on cloud. How in our work we um, represent the pod cloud in a hybrid manner. We uh, partition the pod cloud into some high level object here and some um, non empty blocks of size 64. And uh, the high level object will be transmitted to the coder at the site information and we will focus on encoding those uh, non empty blocks 64. And uh, in this, in our work, we um, draw inspiration from a uh, uh, generative model. Like uh, the goal of generative model is to learn a distribution and we can be used for variety tasks such as um, image generator or um, compression. For specifically in the voxel domain, we use the contact adaptive arithmetic coding to encode the uh, uh, block 64 and the important part of the adaptive arithmetic coding is the probability model. For example, if uh, I want to encode a voxel of um, voxel v vi here, and if I know that uh, there is 50% of that voxel being occupied, I then it will take uh, at least one bit to encode that voxel. But if I have the certainty 100% that voxel is occupied, I will not lose any bit to encode that voxel. So in this work, we focusing on uh, building, we focusing on estimating accurately the probability model of PV here. V is the a block of site B, in this case D is 64, and we can factorize V into a product of um, a conditional distribution PI given uh, VI minus one to V1, as you can see here. And we want to estimate each term in this uh, using a neural network. We estimate the um, uh, distribution of VI given all the encoded voxel as the finger here. We want to estimate the PVI given all the encoded voxel from V1 to V I minus one. And so the input of our network is the block of site D and the output is the contribution con conditional probability distribution of each VI given all the uh, previous uh, voxel. And so uh, our network have a constraint where the uh, current Current voxel only depend on the previous uh, voxel. So we we have uh, a well known term here is the causality constraint, and um, we enforce the causality constraint by using a mass filter in each convolutional layer. We have um, um, the finger on the right side showing our network architecture and. In each convolutional layer here, we uh, multiply the filter of the, we multiply the convolutional filter with a mass A or mass B. Mass A is in the general, is only applied in the first convolutional layer, and it will restrict the connection from the current uh, voxel to the future voxel. And um, in the left side is the sample of um, three by three by three um, mass A. And we can see that from the uh, center center position of the mass, it will fill by zero until the last position of the mass, and all the other position will be filled by one. And in the subsequent layer in the network, we uh, apply type D mass to um, reach the connection from the current voxel to the future one. And um, we uh, the type B mass is different to the type A mass at the center position here. In type B mass, the center position is um, uh, one instead of zero. And we also deploy two zero connection to avoid vanishing gradient and uh, to speed up the conversion. And about the loss, as you as you might know, the um, Cross entropy between two distribution is the each is the each bit that you need to encode the 
um, sequence of symbol while using the p hat with the uh, real distribution of that sequence is p and we use that one to to uh, we do that loss to uh, uh, learn our model. And um, so we have the probability distribution of each block. And last one to the last one, we, our encoder will encode from the first voxel. And then uh, every time a voxel is encoded, it will be fed back to the input and to predict the distribution of the next, next voxel. And we will encode the uh, next voxel using that distribution and so on. So uh however we do not do it on all the block 64 because as as i said the pod cloud is very spare and we eliminate the specificity by partition of block of 64 into multiple block size like into multiple child block to limit as much as specificity in the block so as you can see in the finger here uh, the block 64 is encoded as single block when uh, yeah and um if the if the uh, and we this the decision to partition into lower level or not is depending is depend on the bit rate of that um solution for example if the if this uh solution if if this partitioning solution is have a lower bit rate compared to the uh or compared to the encoding of block 64 as a single block we will choose the two level partitioning and we um like for each block 64 we can partition it into uh two level here like we have block 32 four block 30 and four empty block 32 and all the empty block will be uh, indicate by just uh, only bit zero, and we can save a lot of bit here. And uh, we can also have three or four level of partitioning. So uh, our model is trained uh, with the data mixed from um, MPEG dataset, Microsoft, and ModelNet. And in total, we have around uh, 20,000 20, training block 64 and 2000 block 64 for validation. We chain or with Adam optimizer over 50 epochs and we have test our um, method with some uh, uh, YSD zero sequence for testing port cloud in from uh, MPEG and Microsoft. The link to the data set is uh, in the uh, below. And uh, in this slide, I show some uh, testing for cloud. Um, I'm sorry that I cannot share my screen. My screen show can show you some um, animate. So we have the first two images is for the for cloud from um, Microsoft, and the last two is uh, for for cloud from the from uh, MPEG. They they are ten bit for cloud. So, and in this table, I am showing the uh, average bit per occupied voxel for um, our method comparing to uh, GPCC. GPCC is the standard for MPEG and uh, PPNI. PPNI is the recent proposed intra frame coding uh, that um, a, a paper that published in uh, 2020 is a new method. So, um, in the first two column is the data set, also the uh, port cloud name and port cloud bit depth in our test sequence. Uh, the next two column is the number of uh, for the um, PPNI and GPCC from MPEG. And in every next two column, we show the um, bit per occupied voxel for our uh, solution and also the gain of uh, the GPCC uh, when we increasing uh, the uh, number of uh, level for partitioning like uh, 
in the first two column here, we have only single block 64, and then we enable block 32, and then enable block 16, and the last one is 8. So as you can see, with the only block 64, like we encode all block as the single block, we could have around 20% gain over ZPCC. And if we enable block 32, we could have around um, uh, more 5% gain. However, by adding uh, block 16 and block 8, we do not have much gain compared to the uh, previous one. And um, but however, in uh, if we have a four partitioning level, our encoder could have around 28% uh, gain compared to ZPCC. And um, this slide showing the um, percentage of the point that encoded in each block. So uh, as you can see, most of block, uh, most of points are encoded in in block 32 and block 64. As you can see um, in the um, yellow and the uh, blue, most of the points are encoded in block uh, 32 and 64, and very few points are encoded in block 8 and block 16 is less than 10%. That explains why uh, when we uh, enabling block 8 and block 16 into our encoder, the gain is not you know, as much, around um, 1 or 2 percent. And uh, so I have present our virtual DNN solution for encoding uh, port cloud geometry. We have uh, a hybrid um, representation of the port cloud and also we are the first one who deploy the generative model in the fossil space. And um, we also have the multi-resolution encoder. Our method have around 28% gain over ZPCC. And for the future work, we, we will develop more powerful, powerful generative model and we will try to uh, jointly encode the geometry and attribute as you know that we only have the geometry part here. and um, here are some reasons that I used in this presentation. And thank you for listening. And do you have any question? Uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh, about the choice of uh, your D. You said that you choose D is equal to 64. Um, okay. In the beginning, uh, I was, I, I'm just wondering why exactly 64? Oh, okay, so as um, this work was uh, developing from the previous work, uh, we have tasked with uh, block 128. We have tasked with block uh, 128 before, but uh, the performance on bigger block is not uh, better compared to the block 64. And as you know that um, the port cloud are very uh, spare and very few also are occupied and um, I think using bigger block might not uh, efficient compared to using smaller block. And have you tried with less with because in the last uh, uh, figure you I think you you have shown uh, 64 plus 32 but I, I didn't see uh, 32. Yes yeah. yeah, so um uh, our encoder have the have multi resolution. So for we generate the block 64 that are the occupied one, and we will uh, partition each block 64 into multiple size like 2D uh, encoder. As you might know in um, SEBC, they also partition into multiple block size to uh, have a efficient encode. So we are doing the same here. We partition each block 64 into multiple block size to gain as much as um, performance. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for speech. And I have a question that seems that the encoder here is for the one object of the point call. So how do you think about if now we have a point call 
of the map. Like uh, we use the LiDAR to collect the uh, map of the coin call, the environment. How do you think yeah. this model can be applied to such case? Yeah, we um yeah is the uh, the future work that are we focusing on. Like we are working with the static park cloud, and also as you can see that we have the big data park cloud. So we are still working with some quantized park cloud where we still have the limitation in the um size of the park cloud. So like, uh, however, if like if we have the ten bit data park cloud, the uh, object will be spread spread over uh, 1020, 1024, uh, um, 100, 1024 uh, vessel in every dimension. So if the if we have multiple object here, if we have multiple object inside that range, we still can able to encode that. But um, like the performance, the performance is uh good as uh we have a single single object i guess okay okay uh, that's what we also want to uh, do in the future work okay i see thank you very much thank you for the presentation how do you encode currently the um attributes so um as, as i said we are just uh working with we are now just working with the uh, geometry and uh, in the future what we we want to work with uh, the attribute and the attribute now is we the in the table comparing with the zpcc that we also just encode the uh, geometry in the zpcc 